Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. A few months ago, my wife and I decided to install a deck on our house. It wasn't until we spent time drawing it out on paper that we were able to come up with ideas that we could build from. Having that in place made it possible for us to iterate on ideas without always starting from zero. When we started building, it was possible for us to go back in our various designs to get a basic idea of what we wanted. This got me thinking of how data science teams use data frames. A data frame is an in-memory snapshot that makes it much easier for engineers to design data processing programs. For example, if a data engineer is attempting to write a multi-step statistical process, the steps in the process can themselves be milestoned using a data frame. This greatly reduces the amount of code that has to be written. A data frame can appear in many different kinds of formats depending on whether it's structured data, semi-structured, or unstructured. For example, if it is structured data, it will appear as a table. If it is semi-structured like JSON, XML, Avro, or Parquet, it will appear as its native hierarchical format. Once the data frame is produced, the consumption of that frame is in a large part dictated by the tools that are using it. That takes me to my next point, which is that data frames are used for a lot more functions than just data science work. Indeed, many data pipelines leverage data frames extensively. Even in SQL-based data stores, you'll find common table expressions or CTEs. A CTE provides frames that can be used to do complex transformations in a somewhat linear process. For example, imagine you have a esoteric selection of data like e-commerce order numbers that have a certain product being purchased and a certain quantity of that product that also exclude certain customers. Now, CTEs provide flexibility to create frames of each of those esoteric selections of data, but those frames don't have to be assembled in a cascading form. As a best practice, we will name CTEs so we can use them and reuse them in code later. The CTE frames can be manipulated in code to assemble either new frames or finished jobs. The key stipulation is that there must be some kind of output. That output will be persisted into a result cache. The beauty of a CTE is that it can be represented as code and reused later as just a piece of SQL. Another interesting use of data frames came from Snowflake in the form of a result scan command coupled with asynchronous queries. In November of 2020, Snowflake made it possible for their query compute pipe to be densely packed by allowing queries to be completely asynchronous. By using Python or Java, the juggling of these queries is managed by the programmer. The amazing thing about asynchronous queries is that they can run as soon as they're compiled. So in our tests, we were issuing about 1,000 queries per minute. However, such a large landscape of queries would obviously be daunting to capture in downstream logic. However, Snowflake makes that process easy by generating query IDs for each of the queries and by coupling that with the result scan command, the output can behave like a data frame. This means that you can run some amazing logic without hunting and pecking for the data or moving data in and out of the programming tools. If you'd like to learn more about this technique of using asynchronous queries with a result scan command, I suggest reading a white paper we released titled The Huge Feature that Snowflake Sneaked In. Additionally, if you would like to talk with Intricity about your specific situation, we've included a link for that as well.